I'm honoured to read one of Ivan Boland's poems to celebrate her on this day, National Poetry Day. And it's in shock and sadness that I have to consider that she's no longer with us. But it's really wonderful to be able to mark her achievement, her legacy, and her huge support of other poets, particularly women poets, now. I'm going to read Time and Violence. It's from her collection, In a Time of Violence, which was published in 1994. This particular poem meant at that time a great deal to me as a younger woman and continues to have meaning as I age because it's about the importance of a woman being allowed to live in a mortal body which changes and ages instead of being, as she so often is, captured a lifeless emblem in the poem. It's a kind of violation, that treatment. And I want to very much acknowledge uh, one of my uh, my most treasured memories of Ivan, um, not just the support she gave to me as a young poet, but um, in the early 90s, uh, an anthology which shall be nameless was, was published and excluded a great deal of the huge amount of creative and well-published Irish women poets. And she got up at a public debate about this notorious anthology and said that she was ashamed to be one of only three women in the contemporary poetry section. And she wished she, her work had not been put in that section because she felt it was unfair. So I just wanted to share that memory of her because it was a very spirited debate and she was already a, a highly established and respected figure. But she took the side of those many of us who'd been excluded. And that was really typical of Ivan, of her inclusivity and fairness. So here goes. Time and Violence by Ivan Boland. The evening was the same as any other. I came out and stood on the step. The suburb was closed in the weather of an early spring and the shallow tips and washed out yellows of narcissi resisted dusk and crocuses and snowdrops. I stood there and felt the melancholy of growing older in such a season and all I could be certain of was simply in this time of fragrance and refrain whatever else might flower before the fruit and be renewed I would not, not again. A car splashed by in the twilight. Peat smoke stayed in the windless air overhead and I might have missed it, a presence. Suddenly, in the very place where I would stand in other dusks and look to pick out my child from the distance, was a shepherdess. Her smile cracked, her arm injured from the mantelpieces and pastorals where she posed with her crook. Then I turned and saw in the spaces of the night sky constellations appear one by one over rooftops and houses and Cassiopeia trapped, stabbed where her thigh met her groin and her hand, her glittering wrist with the pinpoint of a star and by the road where rain made standing pools of water underneath cherry trees and blossoms swam on their images was a mermaid with invented tresses her breasts printed with the salt of it and all the desolation of the North Sea in her face I went nearer they were disappearing dusk had turned to night but in the air did I imagine it a voice was saying this is what language did to us. Here is the wound, the silence, the wretchedness of tides and hillsides and stars, where we languish in a grammar of sighs, in the high-minded search for euphony, in the midnight rhetoric of poesy. We cannot sweat here. Our skin is icy. We cannot breed here. Our wombs are empty. Help us to escape youth and beauty. Write us out of the poem. Make us human in cadences of change and mortal pain and words. We can grow old 
and die in.